Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 208, and you can email the show at pedalshift at pedalshift.net or call the voicemail hotline at 202-930-1109 and check Pedal Shift out on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 208th edition of the Pedal Shift Project. My name's Tim Mooney. Thank you so much for joining. On this edition, we are about to kick off yet another round of Pedal Shift Tour Journals, Western C&O Loop. But before we dive in, I've got a little bit of housekeeping, and it has to do with last episode. Make your vote be heard. Uh, that too. But also, <laughs> also go to the episode 207 uh, by Turing Draft. Listen to that if you haven't already, and you can vote for the winner, either myself, Brock, Aaron, or Guthrie, and it's all ranked choice voting. There's a whole system behind it. You can get to it either at the show notes for episode 207 or at the episode 208 at this very podcast show notes. Go ahead. We'll tally the votes at the end of June. Make your voice be heard. Right now, Aaron Flores seems to be a bit in the lead in early precinct uh, results, so check it all out and go figure out who gets the belt. I am currently the belt holder is Aaron going to prevail? Will it be me? Will it be Brock? Will it be Guthrie? If only you can decide. Go vote, please. And we will announce uh, at, I believe, I guess we would announce it sometime in one of the first shows in July. So on to the first edition, uh, which is day one of my Western Sea and O Loop ride, which I just completed this past weekend as I'm sitting right here. Look, everyone's universe has shrunk a lot since the beginning of the pandemic, and nowhere has it hit home more than bicycle touring. I'm fortunate enough to have one of the country's crown jewel routes right around where I live. The first trip this year that you probably heard about uh, looped the eastern third near D.C. This time, I'm rolling out into the wilderness of the western third of the CNO, looking for adventure and, frankly, some solitude. This edition covers day one. On day one, I picked up a freshly repaired bike in Hancock, Maryland and rolled off. But would the bike behave? And more importantly, would my body betray me after just a day on the trail? It is the Thursday night before I am about to leave on the CNO Western Loop or the Western CNO Loop, whatever I'm calling it. And uh, I'm standing out here on my deck here in uh, the eastern panhandle of West Virginia, looking out towards the uh, the wooded part of my property into the state land. Um, I'm lucky enough to have had this property over the course of uh, uh, last all, all, more than 10 years now. Uh, it's uh, been 11 years now. And this has been a really fun place to have as a, some kind of a base for an adventure like the one that I'm about to go on. I am about seven miles and change away from the Potomac River. And on the other side of the river, the, the uh, Maryland side of the river, lies the CNO Trail. Now, over the years, I have uh, used this as a launching point or as a finish line or as a uh, middle point for many a CNO adventure. And uh, this time I'm going to be doing something that I've never done before, and that is to go from here to Cumberland and back uh, all by bicycle. Now, uh, there is a slight variation to that that I did talk about on the last episode of the podcast, and that is, or at least as I'm standing here, uh, the last episode that I just recently released. Uh, my bike is currently sitting 20 miles away at a bike shop, literally steps away from the CNO. And uh, rather than go there tonight, get the bike, drive it all the way back here, I thought, well, might as well just go there tomorrow morning, uh, get dropped off uh, with all of my gear and start the ride from there. And then I will ride all the way out to, out to Cumberland, Maryland the terminus of the CNO. And plan is at this point that I would turn around and bike back. My thought process on this is that I am going to be having as low of an impact and as low contact as possible uh, with folks out there with a couple of potential caveats. Number one, I do think that I am going to go into Cumberland and resupply. I think that, um, you know, as I sit here in June of 2020, I've gone into many a grocery store, not a 
ton of times, but I certainly have gone into grocery stores to get things, and I don't think that uh, I've been reckless in that way. So I think that that might be something that I do. Number two, I do really need to be able to water up uh, in Cumberland if I don't want to be constantly using my water filter to uh, uh, resupply myself with water. Cumberland's a good place for all of that. There's certainly opportunities, and I think I'll do that. So I, I, I think that where I have landed is back to the original plan, that this is a, effectively a loop that I am going to ride out from uh, Hancock. This is going to be on the uh, Navarra Safari, the um, REI bike that has been my humble steed for many a year right now. And um, I should mention what is getting done. Uh, I was having issues with shifting, and I, uh, particularly on the rear cassette, tried everything, was kind of messing around with things, and I thought, well, you know what, I wonder if this is just a shifter cable issue. And so after a ride, a shakedown ride I did a couple of weeks ago, I went to uh, the Sino Bikes over in Hancock, great shop, um, gone there many a time, dropped it off and thought, okay, they'll, I'll bet you they'll end up replacing the cables, or, or maybe even all they need to do is lubricate them and everything will be fine. Well, it turns out my derailleur was shot. So uh, that would explain a whole, whole lot of things. So new derailleur, eventually, they ended up uh, uh, putting out for the part and the wrong part was sent by whatever supply house they were working with. So they were able to figure it out uh, with another bike that they had on hand. So luckily, the bike is ready to go and I'll be uh, uh, grabbing a brand new, uh, that new kind of freshly tuned kind of feel for a bike tomorrow, which will be fun to have. I'm going to be riding a little, I won't say yeah, on the heavy side, but I'm going to go full panniers. Um, I decided, you know, rather than continue to, uh, rather than do the freezer bag cooking and stuff like that, because it is going to be a little bit warmer out, I thought it would do something a little bit more fun. I think I'm just going to bring a loaf of bread and a bunch of cheese and make grilled cheese sandwiches <laughs> for like dinner tomorrow uh, out in the woods. Because the first night, I'm probably going to go as far, maybe maybe 40, 50 miles, give or take, depending on, on how I'm feeling. Um, th- there are some really fun, good campgrounds that are away from it all, that are on the other side of the Pawpaw Tunnel, but not close enough to Cumberland that you're starting to get folks that would be coming in for like kind of weekend uh, um camping or partying or whatever. Yeah, I kind of like, as I talked about the last time, to have a little bit of solitude. And this is the right stretch of trail for that. So uh, I've got a couple of campsites in mind that I'd be going to. It would be real unlikely that I'd run into anybody unless they were doing bicycle touring or they were hiking, in which case that would be perfectly fine. I just don't want to run into, you know, kind of a uh, car camping uh, group of folks. Car camping's fine. It's great. Every, I, I encourage everybody to do it. It's just not the vibe that I'm going for on this trip. So in any event, that's sort of the initial plan. Uh, Day two, I would get out to Cumberland. Uh, Open question, do I just keep my stuff there and do a round trip, go into Cumberland, um, gear up uh, or get get, get, resupply and then come back and then stay at the same campsite? Eh, Who knows? I think it's more likely I feel more comfortable bringing my stuff with me. I mean, um, I think that that's better. An unloaded bike is a lot uh, easier to ride, but Eh, I, I, I think it's totally fine to have it all loaded up, but it is an option if I want to do that, especially if conditions are really nice at the whatever campsite I choose. But in any event, I figure I'll ride in in the morning, resupply, turn right around, and get back out to the rural uh, um, far away sites that are away from the Cumberland area, uh, getting closer to the Pawpaw area perhaps, but, but in a, in a way so that it's away from stuff. Again, trying to maximize my lack of contact with, uh, any folks out there. I think that the CNO, as I saw last time is just getting more and more use, which I am a huge, a hugely celebrate. I think that's awesome. But, um, in some ways uh, it's a victim, I'm a victim of my, um, own desires and wishes. I was like, oh yeah, I really want people to, uh, explore and enjoy this. But you know, now of course, with everything that's going on, outdoor recreation is amongst some of the few things that we can do. So there Putting, there's putting a lot more pressure on trails like this. So for those of us like me who, who do like a little bit more of a wildernessy alone kind of a thing, uh, I'm going to have to kind of make do with what I got. So that'll be uh, the end of day two. The plan for day three is basically 
ride home. And I've got a few options. You've got the sort of uh, road route after Hancock, which is about 20 to 22 miles of um, uh, some, uh, I've done it before. It's not, it's, I just don't love it. It's a 50 mile per hour road with no shoulder and a couple of really hazardous spots. Uh, it's doable. It's fine. Or ride the trail to, um, shall we say a bridge that, um, well, you know, crossing it would be wrong. (laughs) <laughs> so uh, we'll have to decide what what kind of adventure I'm in the mood for. Do I want to brave vehicular traffic or do I want to brave uh, CSX bulls? So we'll see. And we will uh, document all of that, of course, for you all here on the show. So I'm really excited to be bringing you all along. This is uh, This is something that I've been really waiting for for a while. It's really fascinating how the fact that the campgrounds were closed, I felt that for the most part, bike touring was really taken away as a, as a genuine option for me during this time period between the last tour and this tour. And so uh, now I'm really excited to get out there. Do it in a responsible way. Do it in a way that is um, going to be safe for me, safe for other folks. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to be getting some good weather out of it as well. And uh, if that's if that's what I get, good weather, a little bit of alone time, a little bit of uh, wilderness, maybe see some good wildlife out there, man, that would be exactly what I want. So happy to be taking you along. Next stop, Hancock, Maryland. From just outside of Hancock, Maryland, hey, we are off. Had a little bit of a kerfuffle this morning. Um, trying to get some roof work done on my house and had to kind of scramble to get a check ready for the folks to pick that up and everything. And now I am uh, uh, had a, a variety of discoveries, including, hey, I didn't have bungees and I needed to get bungees. So there was that. You can probably hear the train in the background here. I am on the Western Maryland Rail Trail. <laughs> Typically, I like to split my rides, do the CNO in one direction, the Western Maryland Rail Trail in another just because I really do like the CNO along this parallel stretch here. There are points now in the extended version of the Western Maryland Rail Trail that allows you to hop back off, actually forces you to hop back off onto the CNO. So I'll certainly be doing that then. I did pick up my bike. That was another bit of the kerfuffles um, after I picked up some bungees at the dollar store here and was able to get everything lashed onto the bike. Uh, that all went fine. Uh, Kimberly went off back to the cabin. Everything is good. So uh, get the bike. And the gearing's not not quite aligned. So that's another reason why I wanted to be on the paved trail so I can use the barrel adjusters to kind of tune that a little bit better. Um, But otherwise, it's shifting great, much better than it was before. Turns out, rear derailers, you need those. Uh, Pro tip. And let's see, weather is gorgeous, a little warmer than I'd like maybe, but the next couple of days are just going to be absolutely fantastic. Sunday, in fact, is probably going to be my preferred day. It's going to not get out of the 60s at all and be cloudy. Today, tomorrow, a lot of sun, so I'm fully covered up right now and uh, ready to roll. The nice thing about this being a Friday as I'm rolling on this trail is this trail, I think, would normally get some really heavy use on the weekend. So taking advantage of it now is probably the best bet. I may do the CNO on the return trip. We'll just kind of see. Often when I'm coming back from the Cumberland side, though, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of ready to get some nice sweet paved trail action. So you know, hold me accountable on that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, picked up some food. I'm good to go. I realized, oh, also I realized I didn't have um, a lighter to light my uh, larger stove. I brought my larger stove, the Green Dragon, uh, that I've mentioned before, but I do need a way to light that, unlike my other smaller stove, which has an internal lighting mechanism. So I was standing there at the dollar store going, oh, oh, lighter, need that. (laughs) So I got real lucky on that. Um, Otherwise, I would be eating uh, bread and cheese sandwiches rather than grilled cheese sandwiches. I do have uh, some ice and a little bit of cold beverage uh, uh, set up for me for tonight, so I'm very excited about that. Hopefully that will hold its coolness and not get everything wet inside my pannier. I think we're going to have to see how that goes. I'm um, planning on taking lunch at my usual spot on the other side of the Pawpaw Tunnel, uh, although that'll be a little bit later in the day as I am sitting here just before noon. A uh, lot later start than I really wanted to get. Um, it's only going to get warmer as the day goes on, but that's okay. I only have to go 
oh, somewhere in the 40 mile range or so today to be able to get to Potomac Forks, which is the campsite that I would really like to get to. Um, it's the it, it's a peculiar one. Check it out on the CNO guide. You can either check them out on YouTube. That's where the videos are, but you can find them at pedalshift.net slash cando, C-A-N-D-O. And uh, you can see that particular one and why it's kind of weird and interesting and cool. Um, and I like that one. So anyways, off we go, um, more to come. <laughs> from a very quiet Pierre, Maryland. I believe it's Pierre. Uh, the uh, beginning of the newer version of the Western Maryland Rail Trail, about 11 miles in, give or take. Um, I'm standing on a pretty sun-soaked bridge, so I'm actually going to drop out into the shade. Um, I'm still getting used to this whole summer riding thing. It's so funny. Normally by now I will have done at least maybe another tour or I would have been riding more on the CNO. It's like I feel hyper out of <laughs> out of practice at this point. Um, it's funny. It, it is it is a, a muscle for lack of a better term, right? You know, it's something you've got to practice and if you don't, well, it's not going to not going to be the same. Uh, just t- doing a quick look piping ba- back into the sun here again. Just to take a look at my gear, make sure everything's on. Bike's riding better. Uh, I added some air to the tire. I think it was a little on the low side, side and I'm hoping that's just because it was uh, unattended for a few weeks rather than there being a, any kind of a leak. This bridge is, uh, is uh, kind of cool. It is, I think, intentionally rusting uh, to give it kind of a cool uh, rail look. Uh, this is an old rail trail, uh, that, or it is a rail trail, an old rail bed that's been expanded. It's got a beautiful view of the uh, C&O, which is going over, I think, an aqueduct. Uh, it, it appears, well, it must be an aqueduct of the old canal, uh, an unwatered part, which is actually a nice area to ride in. The bummer of it is, is when you go through this on the C&O side, uh, you're in the, the aqueduct itself, so you can't see the river from uh, here. And uh, this is going over one of the creeks. I wish I remembered which one it was. I may have to look that up and hopefully uh, drop that in. But the uh, it is a pretty major creek that's flowing right directly into the Potomac River right here. And from this perspective, you get a great view of the river and turn around and see a mountain behind you and uh, just a beautiful big puffy white clouds today and blue sky. I mean, it is just an A-plus kind of day for riding. Uh, so lots of folks out here on this trail for a Friday afternoon. I will be rejoining the CNO in a little bit. I think I'll probably... Uh, stick on the CNO perhaps uh, when I'm reintroduced to it rather than hop back on the Western Maryland Rail Trail. There's a bit of a hop on hop off thing for uh, the next, uh, not too terribly long, uh, maybe another five or 10. I don't even think it's quite 10 miles from here that the Western Maryland Rail Trail extends. Um, The interesting thing about this, and I think I've mentioned this on other shows, is that there's been talk and there are plans potentially to extend this and cross the river into West Virginia. Um, because there are there is an, an abandoned rail tr- uh, rail bed there, and the unfortunate thing is is that there are there's also bat habitat in a lot of the tunnels, and they've fixed that or at least they solved that issue to not disturb that bat habitat by uh, hopping back on the CNO on this side. I don't know if that's possible on the West Virginia side, so we'll have to see how that all ends up going. But in the meantime, this extension is really fantastic. If you never had an opportunity to be out here. To ride it, it's it's really great and uh, runs literally parallel to the CNO, so you can do a little loop and experience both um, whenever you'd like. All right, well, I'm going to keep going, and uh, of course, <laughs> and uh, yeah, on target, feeling good, a little warm, uh, watered up uh, as well. Uh, had a little snack. We'll stop for a little more of an extended lunch probably, and then not too distant future, I may ride all the way through the Pawpaw Tunnel and then have lunch at my normal spot as I mentioned before. We'll just kind of see. Uh, don't don't want to uh, do it just for the sake of that being my normal spot, since I did get a uh, later day than normal. Just passing Bill's place right now, which is the uh, famous bar here in uh, Orleans. Orleans, no, it's not New Orleans. It's something Orleans, Little Orleans. That's right. Um, Bill's place is one of those places that if you are doing the trail for the first time, you should duck your head in, you should go in. But it is, uh, uh, it's basically just a bar. (laughs) I just am not in the headspace for a beer right now. I will be maybe later. 
just so happens that I've got a few with me, so that's great. I am on the final stretch of the Western Maryland Rail Trail here on the western end of it, and it is just it's so picturesque. It uh, goes through this, oh, well, I mean, they clearly carved it out. It looks like it was carved out back in the day uh, so that they uh, could maintain the rail grade. And it's just gorgeous and pretty nifty. And there's, of course, the new parking lot there that's right across from Bill's Place. So if you want to drive out to Bill's Place instead, you're more than welcome to. Um, oh, and I forgot there's a little tunnel that we get to go through here at the very end. Not very big, but a tunnel nonetheless. So I thought I'd take you with me on this. Not sure. I am uh, experiencing the breeziness uh, of today, which seems to be predominantly aimed at me, which is fine. Uh, a little warmer than maybe I would like. Here we are in the tunnel, if it wasn't obvious from the audio change. At least I can hear it. I don't know if you can. All right, here we are on the other side of it. Yeah, um, so this will be the last of the paved section here. This is a two-mile section that has Bill's Place slash Little Orleans right in the middle of it. There is a cell phone signal here now that hadn't been in the for a while, so I was able to take advantage of that and throw another picture up on the Instas. Uh, one of the things that, the reasons why this did not end up being a one of the um, types of podcasts where I would put the true journals up in a quasi live fashion is I'm just out of uh, cell phone signal for so much of it. I think it really wouldn't be very worth it. Uh, people would be getting episodes in lots of chunks. So I thought that it would be better just to hurry the production on this and get this out to y'all as part of regular episodes of the Pedal Shift Project. Going past a beautiful, almost log cabin-y style home that's right here on the Western Maryland Rail Trail. And I'm seeing the structure that should be returning us back to the CNO. Really beautiful surface here. Uh, I, I know that a lot of folks will uh, don't love the CNO surface. And the interesting thing is that between this roughly 20, 20 plus, it's, 20, it's at least 22, I think it's up to 27 now, uh, or 24 at least. We've got 24 miles that you're going to be doing on paved. And after the new surfacing project is completed this fall, or the next leg of it, you're going to have mile marker 17 to 72, so there's, what, a, a 55 additional miles. 55 plus, you know, you're, you're, you're nearly, you're, you're probably close to half of the, uh, of the entire uh, amount done. Um, now, I'm screwed up, but this is actually kind of cool because I went, I continued to the paved trail all the way to the end here, and uh, I see the trestle that crosses the Potomac over to West Virginia. Um, I believe it, I believe that's going over the river. So this is, this is the place where I was describing before where things would be changing. And um, I think that that's really gonna be an interesting possibility to add on to things. Now, it is pretty blocked off, but I'm sure enterprising folks who would wanna get on there and uh, would like to take the risk, because boy, that would be a risk, uh, can go over there and enjoy that abandoned rail trestle. Now, I have managed to overshoot things, so I'm going to go back and find my connection with the C&O. I think I have a funny feeling that I've managed to screw it up, and actually it might have been back at Bill's place where I was supposed to uh, rejoin the C&O, which is fine. I just ended up having a little bit more extra fun riding this, so eh, adds about four miles to my day when all is said and done. Oh, maybe just an extra two miles. I'm not a, let's not be a mile weenie on this. Because however long it was from when we started talking is how far I have to go back essentially, so. Well, with that, that little detour, thank you for joining me on this. Now I'm noticing that the winds are stronger going in the opposite direction, so perhaps I actually do have a tailwind going the direction I'm going. Isn't that lovely? We like that. All right, more to come. Uh, I'm thinking closer to Papa. 
from Devil's Stick Pile Campground, about mile marker 144 and a half. A breezy, beautiful day, lower 80s. I tell you, in the shade, it's amazing. Uh, river, is, river is moving rather swiftly here. This is fully the Upper Potomac River. And uh, so, so it behaves very differently. It's a much wilder river up this direction than compared down uh, closer to DC, where it's a, it feels a much like it's a lot more managed. We're above all of the, the dams uh, that you pass by uh, on the CNO. I don't believe there's another dam between here and uh, the end of the trail. So yeah, it behaves much more like a typical wild river. And I think that that's kind of fun to see. As advertised, as I thought, this part of the trail is truly wilderness. Um, there are few, if any, uh, access points. So as a result, there are few, if any, people uh, at this in this part. I haven't passed anybody for miles, and uh, I, that's just uh, such a such a fun, nice thing to have, given what's going on now. That that outdoors recreation is the only thing you can really do in a lot of places. Not everywhere, of course, but. So it's put a lot of pressure on the CNO, which I love. Like, it's great. I've said it before. I, but uh, yeah, it's just nice to have the trail to myself like it often is this time of year out here in the country, um, as well as in other places as well. But th this, is, this is exactly what I was after and what I was hoping for. I am standing right next to the water pump. And uh, although there's no sign on it that's uh, saying, yo, this is shut, uh, it is very much without a handle on it. So as a result, of course, you're not going to be able to get any water out of it. It is interesting <coughs> because, um, and, and I think this, is, this has come up in various social media platforms that I've been looking at, what's the, the, the concept of safety uh, during uh, weather like this where it's very hot for folks that don't have access to water, especially out here where there are, you have no real options. And you're not going to run into a trail ranger who's going to be a, a cart in extra water or have access to the, I'm told, caches of water that are hidden uh, along the trail here. You know, um, it, it is good. They are very, very, very uh, adamant, the Park Service, about saying, make sure you are carrying your water with you. And um, I definitely am. I am uh, uh, running through my, let's see, I'm through two water bottles no, that's not true. So I just refilled uh, one of my water bottles from one of the other ones. And I, what I do is I, I supplement with a half and half of uh, water and half electrolyte uh, drink. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. This is Powerade that I'm working with. And uh, it's because that was the one they had in grape. The only proper flavor for these things I know. I know I'm, I am, uh, I, I know I'm not alone in that, but I also know that I, that is not a definitive statement. So I do prefer myself the grape. <clears throat> and of course I don't drink anything even remotely like that when I am off the bike. So it's kind of a nice little treat. I just finished the last of my gas station cuisine. I normally will go to in Hancock, a, uh, a subway, uh, just because it's quick and it's easy and, and I can get, a, get what I want there. Uh, it is currently closed, which is interesting because I think in many places they're, they're wide open. I don't know what the situation is with that one, but in any event, across the street is the Sheets gas station. So I was able to get some, uh, uh lunch related sandwiches there. I, uh, do have food for tonight. So I, uh, wanted to preserve that for my meal tonight and i do plan on t saturday tomorrow to outfit myself in cumberland with food that will get me the rest of the way back home so i'm going to need to probably get uh let's see i'm carrying breakfast uh, breakfast with me probably need to resupply that i'll need to be able to get uh, uh lunch which i'll probably potentially eat in cumberland maybe an early lunch and then grab uh dinner with me for that saturday night in cumberland and then uh snacks and whatnot i'll have to assess uh, then and there, because that is really, to be honest, the one of only two options. There, there are, there's a couple of, of potential things. Bill's place, which is like I've passed right here, but you know, uh, that's only about 20 some odd miles away from Hancock. Uh, so that's, which is close to the end of my day anyways, on the third day. So there's that. Um, so I'll, we'll, we'll knock that one out. You do have Old Town, which 
has a, a, allegedly a restaurant. Uh, well, they do have a restaurant, but not one that I, I care to, to go to. That's a longer story. I'm missing one. Oh, Papa. So if you cross the cross the river and go to Papa, West Virginia, uh, on the other side of the tunnel from where I'm at right now, there is a town there. Um, there are things. They are in a ver various states of open, opening and closing. Uh, that, that, that town really kind of um, varies on what its availability is. And because I can never count on anything in particular being open there, I do tend to not even go into the town. Um, I have gone before. It's a you know, cute little town, it's, but it's, it's really it's a stop sign and a couple, of, a couple of businesses that are in various states of opening and closing. So um, I never count on that. So where does that leave me? That's, that leaves me with, with Cumberland. So that's the plan. Um, I'll also want to re-up my water supply as well. Haven't had to tap into my uh, reserves yet. I've got three liters of uh, in smart water bottles uh, in one of my panniers, bottom one of my panniers. That'll be great for tonight. <clears throat> that'll be great for uh, tomorrow's water, and that'll certainly be enough to get me into into Hancock because I'll or excuse me into Cumberland. I'll only be if if plan sticks to what it currently is right now. I'll only have about 20 miles of riding until I get into uh, Cumberland tomorrow. So I should be in great shape. The loop, this loop is, is actually kind of fun. You know, it's uh, between two places that have good services and it's only about 60 miles in between each of them. So, you know, even though I, I'm splitting it up in a way that I normally don't, it ends up working out quite well. So, all right, uh, that is it for this stop. All right, we are in the Pawpaw Tunnel. Thought this would be good for some acoustics. Got my lights on, and now I'm gonna secure the phone. I'll shut up so you can hear some of the trickling of the cave here. I have ridden this before. I do not recommend it. All you need to do is shine a light on the surface to understand why. It is uh, rutted, full of potholes, uneven. Uh, the width varies. It is dr dripping wet, uh, slippery. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Um, one side you would hit a, a wooden barrier that's very sturdy that would protect you from going into the canal. The other side you will scrape up whatever you've got, including yourself on 200 old year old bricks, give or take. Uh, don't know how old these bricks are, but uh, interesting story behind it all. They actually built a brick factory literally right on the other side of this tunnel in order to build it because they needed so many bricks to do this. It's a little over a half mile long. You can see one end from the other, but it's almost just like a pinprick of light when you get started. Um, as a grade A claustrophobe, this is just big enough that it doesn't, doesn't trigger for me. Um, the light helps, moving helps, but uh, it's also much cooler in here. On a, I will tell you, it's not terribly hot today. It's in the low 80s and humidity is pretty reasonable. But I'll tell you what, on one of those mid 90s days when the humidity is super high, this is like walking into an air conditioned uh, building and it is fantastic. Uh, it's got a little bit of a musty smell to it. It's one of the real highlights of the ride, I'll have to say, especially on this end. I, uh, I find this to be sort of the, uh, the sign that your, your, your day, if you're going to, if you're riding from the east side and you're going to end up in Cumberland that night that you know, you're working on about, let's see, about three hours of riding to go if you're going to go all the way to Cumberland from here, give or take. Um, so consequently, if you're coming from Cumberland and you're leaving at a reasonable hour, uh, this is a great spot for lunch as I keep, <laughs> keep saying, hey, I'm going to have lunch there. Um, because it is a good spot to come in from the west side.
there's been some graffiti that's gone on in here from time to time and the locals take even more umbrage at that than I think graffiti any place else. I mean, if it was on the side of a bridge, random bridge, it's a non-event, but here people really get upset about it and for good reason. I mean, this is a National Historic Park right here. There's a real history to this. This was a technological marvel. I feel like I'm constantly talking about uh, all these topaz as technological marvels, but this truly was. This, this uh, it was a way of getting past a really nasty stretch of river um, that was just impossible for the canal to uh, go beside uh, because there's a mountain literally right on the side of the river there. Um, and so that created a lot of problems when they were initially looking at the design of this. But then over the years as they built this, and this took years and years to build, but once they did it, I mean, it was a, it was a huge, huge deal. Um, just you know, thinking about not having motorized uh, equipment uh, to be able to move goods in this uh, region of the country, you know, suddenly they were able to move uh, raw materials and then finished products back and forth. And it was a huge deal for the region. And then as with so many things in life, you know, things change and technologies emerge. And right when the canal was you know, kind of in its heyday, that's when trains came about and uh, effectively just made the economics of the whole thing uh, uh, a no brainer to go with train versus the canal here. So it lay fallow for a while. And of course I've told the story a million times about how eventually through the years, the uh, canal ownership went back and forth and there were bankruptcies if memory serves, but no matter what it did, it just it's commercial value ceased and the whole length of the trail went fallow. And eventually there was talk about making this into a highway uh, in, D in the DC side and Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas was having none of that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, he was a big outdoors person and suggested and cajoled and pushed and championed changing this, uh, trail into something that could be used for recreation. And I am grateful for that. So I am about three quarters of the way through with all of my yakking. I'm going to stop here and you can really quiet, really quiet today. Yeah, not as I think on the far side, or I should say the side that I came from, uh, the DC side uh, has more mm, more water seepage, more issues. That's the side that's get, having descaling happening. Uh, there's tons of rock slides on that side of the tunnel, not inside the tunnel, but on, on the, uh, that, that side of the mountain. And so the park service has been working diligently to uh, shore that all up. And as memory serves, they still have some work to do, but they've, they've, uh, sus they sus tend to suspend operations during high season. Um, or at least that's been my, supposition. Now, of course, with all this COVID stuff, you know, this would be an excellent time to do it, except for the fact that now it's probably getting used more than ever. So open question as to what the status is of that. But there is a big trail where you basically have to climb the mountain. Um, and it's not a, it's not like a alpine mountaineering situation by any stretch of the imagination, but it definitely is, um, as opposed to the 10 to 15 minutes of me pushing my bike here, and you listening to me yammer, it's probably about an hour. And in the teeth of summer, oof, um, I've never done it. I know a friend of the show, Preston Page Piper, has uh, done it, and he's done it with a pretty loaded bike. Uh, it is, it is a not insignificant feat to push all the way up there. And then, of course, you, you, you can you can ride down, but there's a lot of uh, switchbacks, and that's uh, that's pretty tricky on a loaded bike with uh, how it's set up. I've seen the videos of it. You should check out his channel for more on that. So I am grateful that the tunnel is wide open. So I'll be going through it twice. Uh, probably, uh, no, I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna be going through it tomorrow. We'll have to see. Tomorrow is gonna be an interesting day. 
all depends on how much time I want to spend in Cumberland and what time I get up in the morning and how far down I go. So this is a really, this is the spot that I remember riding that was the worst. It's just rutted like, it reminds me of those um, ruts that'll be on shoulders to uh, wake drivers up that they're going over a divider. Just in terms of how the bike works on it. I've often wondered why they don't do a better surface on this. I would have to think it's got to be, A, the conditions in here uh, would just deteriorate it, and B, you know, it would be a substantial amount of work. It would be, uh, you know, six-tenths of a mile worth of laying down some kind of a surface, and the question would be, is that really worth it? I suppose they could consider doing the surface that they do that they're doing on other parts of the trail that I've been talking about down uh, on the DC side. But I don't know if that would stand up very well with the very humid conditions in here. Plus, you probably don't want to encourage people to do anything but walk or push a bike in here. So I get that. I've often wondered for those uh, folks who do the through rides, you know, the record through rides, trying to do, do all 184 and a half miles in one shot, you know, superhero style, uh, what they do through this. Something tells me they ride it. But, I mean, if you had some real serious illumination in here, I think it would be a little bit better. But boy, we, even with my relatively bright bike light, I think it's it just appears to be too much for me. I think I've tried, like, as I mentioned, I've tried riding it before and uh, ended up with scraped up everything. Well, I'm almost to the edge here and I'm going to stop punishing you. But you do hear ah, a little bit more of an echo here as we get to the, uh, this, this terminus here. But since there might be some folks on the other side of it, and there are, welcome to Papa. <laughs> hearing the CSX train in the background. This is Potomac Forks Hiker Biker Campsite. Uh, about mile marker 164.8. <laughs> about. Yeah, I'll be down to the 10th of the mile on that. Train noise notwithstanding. Um, that is on the West Virginia side. Uh, the further closer to, that you get to Cumberland, the train tracks are actually almost on top of you in your campsite. So you can't be any closer uh, to town have a cell phone signal and uh, not have trains impacting you uh, in any way shape or form i love this particular campsite uh, if i'm not going to be staying in cumberland this is my choice um, it's about a 20-ish mile or so a little bit less than 20 miles into cumberland so you're far enough away there's no vehicle access here so this is a uh, a remote but within cell phone signal kind of campground train tracks are further away um, and that line although somewhat active you know it, it's it's fine uh, the bigger issue this time this time of year is you're right next to this big lily pond and the frogs and the crickets and they are just that's that's the louder thing but you're going to get that most most campsites uh, on the watered side of the uh, uh, campsites that have watered sections of the canal you're going to have that no matter where you're at there's this cute little canal house thing that's all boarded up and abandoned it's not really used but it's it's a nice setting the only uh campsite where you're on the uh, as you're facing west as i'm facing towards cumberland where you're on the right side of the um uh, of the trail in fact i'm on the other side of the watered section of the canal you have to go over a, a, a little uh, tow bridge or a footbridge i should say so it's cool. It's unique. It's a, a unique amongst all of the campsites, which is another reason why I really like it. It's also an old, uh, I guess it's a rail bridge of some type that is a feature here. It's, it's a very, very nice setting. I think it's the most interesting looking of all of them. And of course, I've got uh, pictures in the show notes for you to all check out. Great, so great spot. Um, this is also a good spot because it's kind of on a remote side. When you're, when the water pumps are working, what I will do is I'll do the, what I like to call the C&O shower, which is fill up my uh, Ortley pannier full of water. That's a lot of water, trust me. And then dump that over me to cool me down. <laughs> um, that is pretty great uh, during times when the water pumps are working, which is not now. I am very happy to report that I uh, pulled out my cold bag and not only 
was my one water bottle still partially frozen, but uh, everything, the ice held up really, really well. So everything is nice and cold, including my beverages for later. Um, but I was really ready for some water. So that was nice and brought my core temperature down a little bit. I think that uh, this was exactly the right spot for me to stop tonight from a mileage perspective too. I think because I haven't been riding as much, I'm certainly not riding every day by any stretch of the imagination. I didn't even have a bike for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I, I'm still not in full bike touring shape. So it's good to kind of keep the mileage lower that way. Um, it was warm. It was full sun, but zero complaints. <laughs> zero. I normally complain about such things, but I have zero complaints. I am... Uh, all set with my hammock. It is up. This is not a great hammock tr uh, tree situation for hammocks, I will say. I, I think that if you had very, very long straps, there's one good spot, uh, one natural spot. But what I have done, they put in a new grill, which is perfect for me because I can put one of the straps around that one of the straps around another tree. It's very sturdy. It's not going to break anything and uh, feeling pretty good. So just getting the legs elevated for a little while is going to feel super good. Breeze is coming in as the sun's going down past uh, the outcrops here. It's full shade. It, it, I'm going <laughs> to, it's going to feel good tonight. It's going to feel real good. So I'm excited to make some uh, grilled cheese for dinner, uh, enjoy a couple of my adult beverages and uh, get all set up here in a few minutes. This is, I've been for the last several months doing a movie night with my cousins and my brother, and it's always been on a Friday night, so I was concerned that I was gonna miss out on things, but tonight I am probably going to wake up at midnight, set the alarm, because I will be going to sleep early this time, and uh, participate in that. I've got a cousin in Belgium, she's in Brussels, I've got a cousin in Seattle, and I've got my brother in Portland, so we, we uh, managed to rock the uh, curvature of the earth pretty well. Uh, East Coast gets the midnight slot, uh, West Coast folks have kids and they go to bed. So 9 p.m. works for them. And then uh, uh, Sarah has the enviable duty of getting up at six in the morning. Um, good on her. All right. Uh, so that's it for uh, at least the first part. I'll probably, maybe, perhaps I will check in uh, and let you know how the grilled cheeses went. This is the first time I've ever brought a, uh, a pan instead of a pot. Uh, and I just thought this would be something more fun. A loaf of bread, a bunch of cheese, some butter, and a non-stick pan on top of my uh, Green Dragon stove. I think it's gonna work just fine, but I'll check in later. More train noise here. What you're missing was from a few minutes ago, which were my screams of agony. <laughs> uh, you think I'm kidding. Um, so uh, if you've been with the show for a minute, you'll remember that uh, during my Katy trail ride, day one of that, I foolishly did not take my electrolyte pills at the end of my day and ended up with a full double leg, all muscles um, cramp. Fast forward to 2020, I'm getting out of the hammock and I don't get the f double, that, that, would have, that would have ended me, but I got one and I'm gonna have to look up this muscle because it wasn't my quadricep on my right leg, but it was, um, uh, uh, in, it runs inside from the knee up, so it's it, it's next to uh, the the quadricep. But I will tell you that sucker seized in a way that I have never never had it. It, it, it was it was as bad as it was in Missouri. So I was able to kind of crawl out of the hammock and find a way to get to, to the counter so that the uh, muscle relaxed a little bit. And then it happened again, although I was in a better position since I was upright at that point rather than getting out of a hammock, which is, let me tell you, not easy. <laughs> not easy when uh, you got the cramp like that. I uh, rifled through my pannier and I was super grateful that my, um, uh, I guess I'll call it my toiletry kit, but for it, it actually ends up having, it's got, you know, soap and toothbrush and a variety of things, but it's also got things like ibuprofen and whatnot. And I was like, oh, please let me have whatever I have left of my, of my, um, uh, electrolyte pills, my, those hammer electrolyte pills that I, I, I absolutely swear by. And thankfully I did. I've got quite a few in there, uh, definitely enough for the rest of the trip, but 
All I did today, because I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal today, was I had one full um, sports drink, which honestly you would think should be enough. But it wasn't. Um, So interesting end of my day here. You know, here it is close to sundown and I ended up having a... So I was was thinking of kind of, okay, well, maybe it's time to think about getting into the tent. So I think for at least a little bit, what I'm going to do is... uh, walk around a little bit, stay upright. Cause I, I'm still feeling it. It, it. it definitely, it's funny. It's interesting after a big cramp. I don't know if other folks get this, but, um, it feels like you pulled the muscle. Um, at least that's the, the sensation that I have. Not, not terribly, not like, you know, inextricably, I'm sure it'll be fine later, but just really interesting to see what the body does throughout all of that. Is it related to my adult beverages? Well, I'll tell you what, it, that, it, that wasn't the factor um, in Missouri, that's not been a factor in the past, uh, when I've gotten them and I do get them not infrequently if I'm not paying attention to my electrolytes. So obviously I watered up, um, and that throws your balance off too. So, you know, important, important takeaway, listen to your body, know what your body is doing. And, um, you better believe that those electrolyte pills are going to be a part of my tomorrow (laughs) much earlier in the day and probably throughout the day compared to what I did today. Um, that is no bueno. I don't know if anybody else suffers through the same situations as I do, but this, it's not a, am I in shape or out of shape? It's a, it's a bike touring thing in the, in the heat. So that's about it for the end of day one. (laughs) You should have heard. I was, I was like, "Uh, uh." (laughs) I can laugh about it now. It was not fun then. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Statistics. Miles biked. 40. Grilled cheeses grilled. 2. Gear disasters averted by Dollar General run. 2. Campsites on the wrong side of the trail. 1. Embarrassing screams from debilitating and weird leg cramps. 2. Future bike tours where I don't bring electrolyte pills. 0. And as always, we like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community, expanding into live shows and covering new tours like the Kessel Run. If you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot and annual options. If you're not into the small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart. Keith Nagel, Brock Didis, Thomas Skado, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgadis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Stuart Buchan, Mr. T, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Greg Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Byron Patterson, Joachim Robber, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Henkel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Avilas Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Dan Gebhardt, Jody Zoranin, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtal, Reinhardt Biggle, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Gothman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushak, Greg Latois Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, Don Funk, Tom Bilch, Ronald Paroli, Dave Roll, Brian Hafner, Misha LeBlanc, Ari Messenger, David Grotke, Wally Estrella, Sue Reinert, John Lecko, Stephen Granada, Philip Mueller, Robert Lackey, Dominic Carroll, Jackie McCulloch, John Hickman, Jack Smith, Carl Presso, David Neves, Patty Louise, Terry Fitzgerald, Peter Steinmetz, and Timothy Fitzpatrick. And thanks also to all past and anonymous members for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available. 